Hey, welcome back to Mr. Mig's Classroom. I'm Mr. Mig, and today what I want to do is again talk about the FAA Part 107 exam. Specifically, what I want to do, as you can see from my screen here, is I want to um, I want to talk about flashcards. I want to help you all make some flashcards. I've talked about this in previous videos, what you could do to help make yourself successful for the Part 107 exam. So today, I'm going to go through about 15 flashcards I recommend you make. Then I'll do a few other videos where I talk about a few more uh, flashcards. So let's get right to it and start making some flashcards. <clears throat> so over here, you'll see I have the front. I'm just going to do this real basic, real simple, nothing crazy. Just here's the flashcard you should make. You get a old fashioned, you know, four by six index card on the front of it. This is what you should write. And here on the back, that's what you should write. So for this example, the question is the number of drones you can fly simultaneously. That's what you write on the front. On the back, write the number one, because you can only fly one drone at a time unless you have a waiver. All right, if you got any questions, put them in the comment section. I do ask you please like my videos and subscribe to my channel. Um, all right, let's go on to the next one. If you need to obviously pause, go ahead and pause. I'm just gonna go through these. Uh, for the second flashcard, so now get a second flashcard. Don't put them all on one flashcard. Don't put them all on one piece of paper. All right, I want you to have individual flashcards for each question. So on the second flashcard, on the front of the flashcard, I want you to write the maximum height you can fly above ground level. That's what AGL means. The maximum height you can fly AGL or above a taller building within a 400 foot radius on the back right 400. Let me explain this question a little bit. So basically when you're flying a drone, you can fly up to 400 feet above ground level. If you're over a tall building, you can fly an additional 400 feet over that building as long as you are within 400 feet of that building or tower or whatever that uh, thing is that you're flying over. So for example, if there's a radio tower that you're flying over to inspect, say you need to inspect the top of the radio tower and the radio tower is 700 feet tall, you're allowed to, in that situation, without additional waiver, depending on where you're at, right? Depending on what uh, airspace you're in. But let's assume you're in class golf airspace. In that situation with a 700 foot tall radio tower, you can fly as high as 1,100 feet because you can fly 400 feet over that radio tower without any special waiver. Um, again, if you need more time to write these down on your flashcards, go ahead and write them down. I'm gonna go to the next flashcard. One thing I'll say is that uh, when you make flashcards, I've made flashcards a lot. I'm a huge fan of flashcards. And when you make flashcards, what I recommend, again, one term per flashcard. And you'll put them in a pile. And as you go through these, if you get one correct, what I used to do is I would tear an edge, right, a side of the flashcard. There's four sides to the index card. So once I had four tears in my card, then that meant I could take it out of my pile because I know it good enough. Just a little side tip. Okay, so the fastest speed you can fly a drone, that's what you'll write on the front. On the back, go ahead and write 100 miles per hour, 100 miles an hour, or 87 knots. Um, here's the thing with uh, knots, they might abbreviate this KT. Another thing is they usually the answer choice here is going to be knots. They're, if you want to put a little side note on this, they're going to try to trick you here, and they're going to write something like 87 miles per hour. That would be wrong. It's 87 knots is the speed limit. And usually this is in knots. For distance, it's usually in feet or miles. For speed, it's usually in knots. Wind direction, well, that's going to be degrees. But wind speed is also usually going to be knots. And then uh, for temperature, it's usually in Celsius. Why they go back and forth between the, few, two, the different measurements, I don't know. But just be aware of that. 87 miles an hour would be wrong. It's 87 knots, which is equal to 100 miles an hour is the fastest speed you can fly a drone legally. All right, next flashcard. What is the weight of the lightest drone that must be registered? So it, essentially, if a drone weighs more than what weight do you have to register it with the FAA? So that's what you'll write on the front. What is the weight of the lightest drone that must be registered? On the back, write UAs weighing more than 0.55 pounds or 250 grams must be registered with the FAA. So notice this is more than. So if a, if a drone weighs exactly 0.55 pounds, it technically does not have to be registered, right? It's gotta be more than 0.55 pounds. Again, normally on the practice exams, I see this in pounds. 
not in grams, but I would know both. Know that 250 grams is equal to 0.55 pounds. It could be either way, but most of the time, if not all the time, when I see it on the practice exams and on the exam, the answer choice here is 0.55 pounds, all right? But know that if it weighs more than 0.55 pounds, you must have it registered. If it weighs 0.55 exactly, you technically don't need to. Um, this is one of the reasons that DJI Mini has written on the side of it, 249 grams. Those guys at DJI know how to make, build a drone. Uh, I do not get sponsored by DJI, by the way. I just, it's, the DJI Mini is a good drone. <clears throat> okay, next card. What is the weight of the heaviest legal UA, a Part 107 licensed pilot, can fly? On the back of your flashcard, write, Part 107 pilots can fly drones weighing less than 55 pounds. If it weighs exactly 55 pounds, it's too heavy for you to fly with a Part 107 license. If it weighs 54 pounds, you're fine, right? So less than 55 pounds. And they're going to test that. That's something they will test. Um, and again, that's that's going to be in pounds there. And notice, here's a few things you should start noticing. And when you make these flashcards, you'll notice them more. The, the FAA seems to have magic numbers 55 right so the lightest so to register a drone um or a drone that's requiring registration with the faa is between 0.55 pounds and 55 pounds so 55 is a magic number three you'll notice is a magic number later on we'll get to 400 is a magic number so there's a few magic numbers they have all right next card what is the maximum blood alcohol level a drone pilot may have while flying a drone the answer is 0 0.04. So write that on the back of your uh, flashcard. So if you have more than 0 0.04, if you're at 0 0.05 blood alcohol content, you're not allowed to fly a drone. All right. If you need to pause this, pause this. Otherwise, I'm going to move on. All right. Next question related to the last one or next flashcard. How much time must pass between having an alcoholic drink and flying a UA? And the back of your flashcard, write eight hours. So you, if you have a drink, even if your blood alcohol content is below 0 0.04, if you're at 0 0.01, but you had a drink within the last eight hours, you cannot fly a drone. You got to be wait eight hours and have a blood alcohol content below 0 0.04. Um, remember the FAA sides on safety. Uh, so be aware of this. And also they'll throw in a trick question here on this last one. When they, if they do ask this, a lot of times they'll put in as a wrong answer cho choice 0 0.08 because that's the driving legal limit. And so they sometimes like to try to mess with you on that one. Just remember, it's not the same as the driving legal limit. Uh, next flashcard, the maximum number of days you can, fly, uh, you can take to file an accident report with the FAA. That's the front, back is 10 days. So if you have an accident, somebody go with your drone, right? Whether it's due to a certain number of dollars of damage, the, like say you cause more than $500 worth of damage or someone gets knocked unconscious or has some serious injury, you have to report that with the FAA. You have 10 days to do that report. All right, next uh, flashcard. How much time do you have to notify the FAA if you move? If you move, you gotta tell the FAA within 30 days. All right, next flashcard. And again, if you need to pause and rewind, go ahead and do so. Next flashcard. In order to register a drone with the FAA, a person must be how old? The back of this flashcard should say 13 years old or older. Okay, this one throws people off sometimes because in order to get your FAA Part 107 license, you need to be 16 years old or older. But to register the drone, you do not have to have your Part 107 license. Say you're just a recreational user and you have a DJI Mavic Air that weighs more than 0.55 pounds, right? Uh, you have to register it even if you're only using it for recreational use. If you're 12 years old, you can't register it. One of your parents would have to, okay? Uh, if you're, you can register a drone once you turn 13 years old, but you're still too young to get the license. You have to be 16 to get your Part 107 license. Remember, the license is used for if you're flying for commercial purposes. So if you're just flying recreationally, you do not need the license. <clears throat> Sometimes that gets a tricky line, though. What's commercial and what's recreational? Okay, moving on. Next card. Uh, 
How many months is the FAA Part 107 license valid for? The answer is 24 months. Little side note here. After 24 months, you do not have to take the test again. They updated this a little over a year ago. Now all you have to do is go to the FAA website and you watch a video, um, re-register for another 24 months. It used to be that you had to retake the test every 24 months. That's no longer the case. So your license is valid for 24 months, two years. All right, next flashcard. On the front right, minimum visibility you must have in order to fly a UA. On the back of the flashcard, I want you to write three statute miles. Again, notice here that uh, usually distances is an imperial system, so miles, um, feet, right, things like that. Uh, like I said, weight, usually also an imperial, some pounds is usually what I see. Uh, temperature, however, is when they switch to Celsius. And then for wind speed or speed is usually in knots. Um, statue miles is like regular miles. Knots would be more equivalent, or nautical, nautical miles would be equivalent to knots, if that helps at all. If that doesn't make sense to you, don't worry about it right now. We will talk about that in other videos if you haven't seen the other videos. All right, let's move on to the next flashcard. Next flashcard, minimum number of feet. You must be vertically below a cloud when flying a UA. So how far beneath a cloud must you be at the minimum? And the answer is 500 feet. So write that on the back of the card. You can't be, you have to be at least 500 feet below a cloud when you're flying your UA. So if, if the cloud base, say say the lowest clouds or their, their lowest clouds are 400 feet, then uh, you can't fly that day, right? Or 500 feet, you can't fly that day because you've got to be 500 feet below it. So if you want to fly up to 400 feet, then the clouds have to be at least 900 feet tall or high, 900 feet high. All right, wrapping up here, uh, a couple more cards. Minimum number of feet horizontally from a cloud you must fly. So when you're flying your UA, you have to be 2,000 feet horizontally from a cloud. I know for flatlanders like me, this one doesn't make a whole lot of sense. This is not saying that like if a cloud's 40,000 feet up, but directly above you, you can't fly because it's not 2,000 feet horizontally away from you. No, no, no. That's not what it is talking about. Think of being in the mountains when clouds could be at your level. If that's the case, the clouds are at your same height. The same elevation, then they need to be 2,000 feet away. This way, an airplane's not flying through the cloud, you don't see it, and then it runs into your drone. They don't want that happening. So horizontally, clouds must be 2,000 feet away from you. All right, next card. Repair cost of accident damage that requires you to report an accident to the FAA. So if, you, if your damage exceeds $500. So say you run into somebody's car and it causes damage and it causes more than $500 worth of damage. You have to report that to the FAA. That does not include the damage of the drone. So say your drone's worth $2,000 and you crash it into a tree, but you don't cause any other damage to any other property. You do not have to report that even if you your, your drone is completely destroyed. It's just damage you're causing to other people's property. If it exceeds $500, you need to report that to the FAA. If you have questions, please let me know. That's the uh, that's all our cards today. Again, hey, I really appreciate you watching uh, Mr. Mix Classroom and learning about the Part 107 exam. If you have any questions for me, please put them in the comments below. Please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I'll be uploading some more videos. And go ahead and give me that thumbs up. I appreciate it, and I'll see you next time on Mr. Mix Classroom.